Howdy everybody and welcome back to Hands On CNC. I'm super busy building a three part series on what is a CNC router. Check out all the subjects we're gonna cover. It's gonna be super awesome. So definitely subscribe for that because that's gonna be great. While I'm working on that, there's some visuals that I think would be really helpful and uh, I'm using Blender to create those visuals. Now Blender's a 3D software and my how-to videos are about CNC routers. So that makes this about CNC routers. Hang out, learn a little bit about Blender. Uh, maybe it's not your cup of tea, but maybe you'll find some cool stuff to use. So uh, stick around. All right, folks, uh, jumping into Blender now. Uh, this is Blender 278. It's the most recent release. And we're going to go ahead and open uh, my test project. Now this looks like a lot of weirdness going on here. I'm going to explain everything that's happening. Blender is a little different than your standard CAD CAM. It really is focused on animation. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's really powerful. It can do a lot of things. In this case, I wanted to, to try to figure out how I could kind of mix realities. Uh, there'll be a sample video at the end of what I was able to do, which kind of was just a purely proof of concept. And if you follow me on Facebook or, or or Instagram, you've already seen it, so, huh, you know, surprise. But if you don't, then check it out. Be, you, stick around. It'd be kind of cool. Um, we're looking at this from the camera's point of view. Now, unlike CAD cams, there's actually this concept of a camera because something has to be, when you're recording a, an animation somewhere, something has to be the, the camera. There's other concepts like lights and stuff like that. Um, and so in your 3D view, but you know, just, like, just like CAD cam, you have a left. Uh, you can turn off you know, parametric, make it more normal. Uh, we'll go ahead and take this and we're gonna scale him down a little bit. Didn't need to move him. We're gonna scale him down, so. Let's see, we don't want to do X, we'll do. Nope. There we go. Make him a little thinner. And then, we'll just bring him down kinda to the plane. Anyways, so. All right, so what are, what are all these dots? What's going on here? Let's switch over, so so Blender has a lot of features. So kind of like how Fusion has it, the modeler and the sketch and the cam and a couple of the renderer and stuff like that. Blender is similar in that there are whole sections of the application that are totally different functionality. Uh, in this case, we want to go to a movie clip editor. So we're gonna jump into movie clip editor. Um, and we actually, uh, uh, we can pick a clip. I, I could have sworn it would have, chosen the clip I've already worked, but maybe not. So, uh, you know, I guess we have to pick a clip from scratch. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not in the right move. I'm not. Movie clip editor. Oh, I'm in masking, maybe? There it is. All right. So, this is the movie clip editor. And what this lets you do, you can do two things with it. You can either track something in three-dimensional space so it'll it'll figure out like think your classic motion capture uh scenario you can totally do that with blender um or in the case where we're testing is you can have blender figure out where the camera is moving in three-dimensional space so that you can basically place this um as a background putting in quotes uh and your 3d model will move you know, your camera will move appropriately. So as long as you line up your 3D models correctly, you can actually uh, do some cool things. So how this works is you, you place what are called trackers, um, which is super high level. You place what are called trackers on high contrast areas. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're all, we're all the, the joints are on my CNC. Luckily with CNC, there's lots of high contrast um, spots. And so it, it then goes literally frame by frame uh, you, you let it do the work, um, and uh, it finds all of those uh, those locations. So let's get a timeline up here. This is kind of a cool thing, is you can just create a bunch more windows. Could you imagine if you had your CAD and your CAM windows in Fusion? Well, you, you can do that uh, in Blender. That's just how Blender works, um, functionally speaking. So... Uh, we're at the beginning, but but if we move through our timeline, so there's our timeline. If we move through our timeline, you'll see 
So you'll see this here. These these reds and uh, so this is a good shot because it shows a couple of things going on. Um, if you see red and blue, that's kind of showing you where the camera has, has tracked that successfully. So blue is the future and red's the past. That so shows you kind of where it came from or where it's going to. If you see these dead trackers, that means that uh, it lost the ability to track them. And that's not, that's not the end of the world. That could be that something came off the screen or whatever. As long as you have enough other things going on, it's okay if it loses things. Um, that's perfectly fine. It's, it's, it's not unusual at all for that to happen. So, you know, step one is to pick all your, all your coordinates. Um, now, if you're doing something like a CNC, you probably have a lot of high contrast points on your own machine that you can track. Um, if you're not using CNC, then you would want to actually put tracks on. I've heard of people um, going out with white pieces of tape on a road and putting a bunch of white pieces of tape on the road so they can, they can track movement there. So there's a bunch of different ways, but the, the key is it has to be something high contrast because it's, it's going to use a, a, a series of algorithms to try to follow that pattern through space. So um, very important, um, high contrast. Um, and like I said, if some of them get lost, that's okay because you're looking for the majority of them to not get lost. It's just trying to build an idea of what's happening. So once, once it's figured out where everything is and how, how those patterns are moving, uh, ostensibly in two-dimensional space because it's just going frame by frame by frame to find those items. Then you tell it to solve. So it's basically if, if everything's moving in two-dimensional space, you're going to give it enough information for it to try to project to what that means in three-dimensional space, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you do that by describing your camera. Uh, in my case, I have a full-frame camera. Um, and describing the lens you used. In my case, I, I, this was a test, and, and I learned from this. So the lesson here is know exactly... Um, know exactly what focal length you're using. So if you have a, depending on your camera, but just, just write down, do something so you can look up exactly focal length. In the case of this, I was using a zoom lens. I had it set in between two settings, I'm kind of guessing. Uh, and it, and it's, it's become a foil for me a little bit, guessing. Um, anyways, uh, long story short, know your focal length. It's hugely important. So. Um, if it knows the, the, the size of your sensor, uh, and it knows your focal length, and it sees things move, it can extrapolate by different things moving at different rates under the assumption that those are static. They're not moving, the camera is. It can make assumptions and project these into three-dimensional space, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's, that's what this, this does here, is it, it projects uh, it, it does two things. One, it says, okay, if these things, if these things are, you know, how do I keep these things appropriately moving in three-dimensional space? And what do I have to do to a camera with this kind of lens to allow those things to be static and the space move? So it's kind of, it does a couple of things at once. It's just really cool. So once, you, once you've got those settings, um, you click uh, solve camera motion. There's some other settings here. Um, so you can kind of give it hints about, you know, where, when is the camera being moved? Um, what frames of the camera being moved. In my case, I was moving the camera pretty much the whole time. Um, and then uh, you can do some cleanup if you don't like it, like looking for errors or things you didn't like. Uh, then you can actually, once you basically apply everything, they made it really slick. You can basically say, you know what, I want this picture to be the background of my, of my, uh, uh, the background of my of my scene, which you know most of the time you're using a tool like this, that's what you're going to want, but maybe not always. But it's a fair guesstimate, you know, if you're doing this. There could be, you know, if you're doing motion capture, you don't want this plate to be your background. You want uh, you want to just take the motion capture data and apply it to whatever. Uh, but in this case, I do want this to be my background. And then you can you can set up uh, tracking the scene, which basically sets everything gets it all prepared to go. Um, you can also set a scale, so you can kind of project what this the scale of these things is together. Um, again, really cool feature. Uh, and you can also say, okay, you know, this is the X plane, uh, and this is the origin. So you can kind of get things figured out, like this is a floor, maybe a couple over here, that's a wall, and so it'll kind of help it figure out what's going on. That's the easy, you know, that, that, all, that all came together really quickly and uh, super powerful. Um, now, Back in the 3D view, let's go back to our camera. Um, you'll notice I have this weird block here, and it doesn't make any sense, but I'll explain it. 
it'll make sense, I promise. So we're in the new view, we want to go view, and we want to go to camera. So this is what the camera sees, and you're not really sure, you know, how does this make sense? Well, we can real quickly come over into the camera, and we can say display, and we can, uh, we can actually let's leave that there. If we scroll down, uh, we can click on a background image, and we can add image, and specifically, we can add our movie clip. Aha, now this is starting to make sense. There's our, there's our stuff in three-dimensional space. Um, so uh, what's this block here for? Well, if I don't have this block, this, uh, this green box, which is just a random coloring of green, it doesn't really matter what, this again was just proof of concept. Uh, this green block would not have a shadow when it went under this. So I, you, know, you have to um, give Blender, the renderer, something to cast a shadow, something interacting with three-dimensional space. It also needs to block off the fact that this green box would just keep going, right? It, it's a plate. It's going to go on top of this. It doesn't know anything about this doesn't truly know anything about this space. Um, so the box allows me to say, hey, don't, don't render behind this area, and at the same time, uh, cast a shadow. So it's, it's kind of serving two purposes. It's basically simulating, if you will, um, the gantry. So uh, just if I, uh, if I render this, you'll see it renders, uh, is this a render? There it goes. So you saw how it rendered the two of them, and then it used one to cut out and it put the other there, and if you look, okay, we're not getting our shadow quite right yet. So let me, uh, I had this working, and I, I wonder if I accidentally broke some stuff. Um, oh yes, I remember what caused that. So real quick, we're gonna fix that. So when you go to our lamp, and when you go down, and we say ray shadow, and if we just go ahead and do re-render the scene, we'll slow it to render. Um, I didn't quite do that right. It got better. It did put it up here, uh, but it didn't put it down there. Um, all right. I think that should do it. There we go. So it's a little, it's a little strong, but you get the idea now. Ooh, let me, uh, let me do this so you can actually see what I'm looking at. Uh, okay. Well, sorry for the... So you can see here now we've got a shadow. It's showing up. It may be a little uh, strong if we see here. The thing is that if I were a professional studio, if this were a real job, I would have physically mapped out exactly where every light in the room was. There's actually two fluorescent lights and two bulb lights. They're all LEDs. So uh, if I were doing this for reals as a, as a business, as a, you know, then I would be very specific about how I simulate all of the shadows going on there. Um, but you can see the effect going on here. So this is pretty cool. Uh, how Blend does this, and uh, I don't know that it's necessarily applicable to the land of CNC, but it's interesting how they approach this, and I, and I can see this kind of functional programming maybe showing up in, in the future in other, in other industries and other areas. So I'm, I'm going to show it because I think there's value in just knowing that this kind of mental model exists. And it's called a node editor. So this is really, it's, it's really flat out programming. I mean, you can think a cam does stuff and maybe, maybe a node editing a cam might be really cool. Uh, talk about a new uh, innovative idea. So a node editor is basically a series of functions that are lined up, connected to each other, and they feed into each other until you get an outputted result. So uh, in the case here, it's kind of interesting. We're just going to follow the gantry here for a second. Let's use this as an example. So here's the, gant here's the gantry, and here's our yellow bar, and they're being rendered, right? Well, so we have a database of IDs for the objects, and that's going down here to an ID mask, which is going to make a mask out of whatever object is selected. So it's going to, it's going to, uh, it's going to uh, take that object, and it's going to make it black so that it won't it would be deleted from the scene, it's a mask. Um, then we're gonna render the image and we're gonna send it over here to do a vector blur. So what that's doing is that's actually using the camera motion to simulate some blur on the rendering, uh, which is a great idea. Um, and then when it generates that image, so it needs the speed data, how fast is that camera moving? So when it generates that, when it generates that blurred image, it's gonna come up here 
and it's going to apply the alpha from our ID mask. It's going to actually get in, in, uh, brought in and used. So it's going to apply that alpha. Um, at the same time, the back plate is being affected, and there's a world view that's supposed to be getting affected. All of these are going to be doing work as well, and all of that dumps into this here, and then the result is it creates our output image. So kind of weird way to think of it, but, it, but if you think about this, this is really programming, and, and Cam is really programming too, but you could think of it as, you know what, here's my work setup, and I'm going to run this tool, and I'm going to run it through this job, this strategy, and then this strategy, and I'm going to use this other tool. So not CNC related, but don't be surprised if, if this doesn't show up in the next five to ten years in the CNC world. And if it does, then you heard it here first. Um, anyways, I thought this was really cool. It was a fun Saturday exercise to learn how to do something that you know we see every day in the real world. Uh, well, we see every day when we go watch a movie or watch TV or heck, even in the news, they use this kind of stuff for the weatherman, essentially. Uh, it's just really interesting, uh, tangentially related, uh, and it was some stuff I had to work out for uh, these this three-part ser video series, which is going to be awesome. It's going to be you're going to love this video series. Um, Anyways, uh, that's all I got, and uh, I'm going to leave you guys with the actual sample video that I created, the sample movie. Um, I hope you like it, uh, and uh, thanks. Ooh. Ah. All right, so I hope you guys found Blender interesting. I think that motion capture stuff is really cool, being able to track a camera. And uh, we're gonna be able to do some cool things with that uh, in the video. I've got a couple of ideas. Um, I'm no industrial light and magic or wet digital, but hey, you know, it's a YouTube age and Blender is an open source product, so check it out. It's got a full modeling suite so you can make cool things and pull them into your cam. Um, or, you know, use it to make your own videos and do other things. No, it wasn't, it wasn't quite CNC related, but it was close enough. So, seriously, the three-part series is going to be amazing. Please subscribe and uh, check it out. You'll be super excited when those come out soon.